Hello everybody, welcome back to Bigger on the Inside, the new who Dr. Who Watch on podcast. It's Tim here, um, soon to be joined by TikTok geek Henry Calvert. Now, you should go and follow Henry on TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> now, you should go follow Henry on TikTok. His name is Henry underscore Calvert. That's H-E-N-R-Y underscore C-A-L-V-E-R-T. Um, He does some amazing comic book Star Wars-y sort of breakdown videos over there. Like, if you're a massive geek like me, you can really indulge in his content. But, I was surprised to learn that he had never ever watched an episode of Doctor Who properly. So I got in touch with him, I sent him three episodes to watch, and he came back onto the podcast, and we talked about three episodes of Doctor Who. The start of this podcast is going to be a brief talk about TikTok, and comic books, and lots of other geeky stuff, and then the second half... It's going to be us talking about Doctor Who with three episodes that I thought best summed up Doctor Who. One of them is going to be very controversial indeed, so stick around and let us know what you think. You've got to explain to me about TikTok, because I'm on TikTok and I make odd videos on TikTok, but compared to your following and what people... like, The response you get from your stuff is great, because a lot of your videos seem to be you'll post one video and then there'll just be a series of comments of you answering everybody's questions about how to get into comics, <laughs> Green Lantern recommendations, things like that. So how does all of that work? Exactly, I see you're wearing the Green Lantern t-shirt today. So how did that of sort course. of snowball into what it, what you've managed to sort of make it today? Um, I, if I'm honest, I'm not really too sure. <laughs> I am... Um... I posted a video as a bit of a, it's a bit of a laugh. Um, after I had a, I went through a bit of a rough breakup, and yeah. then I was like, "Ah, oh, screw it, I might as well go on TikTok." Um, so I posted one video that did relatively well, and then I just come. I, I replied to every comment because it was new, and everybody yeah. was so lovely. Um, and then I think through, well, just regularly posting, I've got to, I've got to get to know. I, I've gotten to know people in my comment section. Yeah, and I recognise them, and I, I can have a bit of banter with them, and it's 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 just, it's lovely. It sounds weird, but I I, I really love the community feel. Yeah, that is there, and I, and I feel like I've been really lucky in that regard that everybody has been so so lovely and accommodating. Yeah, I think it also that's partly down to that you're answering people's questions. It's not like people are going. Oh, you like this Batman or whatever, and they're slating it. It's like, do you have any recommendations? Are you like, sure, here's 50 things I like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. And I feel like if, um, and, and what's great as well is on my recommendation videos is that people will recommend other stuff. Um, yeah. And because I, I by no means know everything, <laughs> I haven't read everything. Yeah. Um, so it, it's just great to see that other people are interacting off of my initial video it's, it's great to see it spiral and and grow yeah um for everybody listening i promise we will get to some doctor who stuff later i know that's what people probably tune in for but i'm going to indulge in my geekness as well a little bit um uh, let's talk about comic books because i always see whenever you're on tiktok there's usually a big wall behind you full of novels and graphic novels and comic yep. books tell me about why you love them so much okay comic books right why do i love comic books <laughs> for me personally uh, my two favourite forms of storytelling are musical theatre and comic books. Yeah. I feel like, as opposed to normal um, novels or whatever, uh, you get a sense of um, comic books are more dynamic. Um, people often think that comic books are reduced to superheroes and that's yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but that just isn't true. Yeah, comics suit that that's um that type of story but you can get crime comic books romance comic books my, my favorite comic book is um it's called saga and it's a fantasy romance um it's it's like a story about class and race and it's it's yeah. it's great and it it suits that that form of storytelling so well um i also just think it's although not like big graphic novels can be very expensive um, yeah. <laughs> a single issue is essentially like three quid yeah. and so it, if i'm walking past my local store i can nip in quickly get that and i can read have a good story in like 10 minutes and it's yeah it's barely cost me anything yeah there does seem to be that thing with comic books where it's like 
Like I collect a few. Like I think the last run of comic books I collected was the latest Shazam run from DC. And like a lot of the stuff yeah. I read is superhero stuff. But like when you tell people about it, they're like, all right, yeah, cool. They're like not interested. But then I'm like, do you like the movie Fight Club? Here's the sequel as a graphic novel. And they're like, what? And you start yeah. flicking through and people very quickly seem to sort of get indulged in it quite quickly. I feel like it's one of those things that if you like, you can't dip your toe in it. It's like you're fully into it almost instantly. Oh, Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you try and dabble as such, and then all of a sudden you're collecting six different runs. You've got previous graphic novels. It, it, it's mental. The people that I've gotten into comic books have, um, have yeah. become another version of me in a matter of months. <laughs> it's like, um, it's good to see. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's just a shame that it does seem to be like, I live I live in a little village which is like our nearest town is probably like 20 minutes away so I have to go like it's quite a fair drive mm. to like our nearest comic book store there doesn't seem to be like actual stores anymore it just seems to be a lot of it online which isn't necessarily bad but I always love the thing of going into like a comic book store and looking it's almost like walking into HMV but just for comic books yeah 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 it's great. It's, it's great um you, you're right about the the local shops are disappearing I I live um like similarly to you in a, in a little village and my um, nearest city is uh, York and that's yeah. like a good 40 minute drive mm. uh, and that's I'd call that my local shop yeah um, and the feel in a comic book shop is unlike any other feel in a shop that I've seen I imagine it would be similar to a record shop per se mm. um, in that everyone who works there actively want you to get into it and not in a facetious kind of you know buy this comic yeah, yeah. it's like they, they actually want you to read the good stories they're there to help you and and nurture you as you grow through the hobby and it's it's, mm. it's great and everybody in the shop is well just just like you and me it's it's, yeah. <laughs> it's great and i i I travel hours to get to a good comic book shop yeah, I, would. Yeah. I love it yeah um, so let's dive into Dot 2 because I sent you a message on TikTok and I said I would have thought from everything that you love through Star Wars and Marvel and stuff like that that you must have been a Doctor Who nerd as well like myself um, in which you replied that you, you had only seen a couple of episodes you weren't that much of a fan if a fan at all yeah <laughs> but my only exposure to Doctor Who was I think the first season of Matt Smith Okay. Um, and I, I think the last episode I watched, I'm not good with the names. I don't know. The last no, episode fine. I watched was the one where he's like on top of a church. Okay. And I think there's like, um, he's on top of a church. It's like a big finale episode of, or okay. a Christmas special or something. And the sky's just a massive spaceship of, of Daleks or something. Okay. I think I know which um, one you're on about. Okay. Yeah. Was yeah. he? Was he? Did he and, look and old? Was Christmas he in old? Was he in old man makeup? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That. Yeah. You that's saw that that's one. Okay. the last episode I saw. Yeah. 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 I think and that that's was a lot. I've yeah. a long time ago. So how come that's um, the case then? Is what is it about it that you've sort of never felt totally indulged by? I think because I'm into a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's. And, and with Doctor Who seemingly being so large, mm. I mean, you know, I, I know that there's, I don't know what you call classic era and yeah, yeah. new era type thing. Yeah, yeah. Is that the, the right term? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're right um, so far. Nobody's unsubscribed yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I struggle to find a good place to get into it. And also I think with Marvel, Star Wars, comics occupying my life, yeah. Um, and, and then I went through a massive Walking Dead phase, Game of Thrones, everything. Yeah. To, to get into that, it, it just seemed a little bit tricky. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's probably the reason why. But now that I'm in a bit of a Marvel slump and yeah. there's nothing really new coming out regularly, I think yeah. it's something that I'd be interested to get into. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Well, this is good because I came up with three episodes that I thought would be a good jumping on point. All three are three different Doctors from three different series. They're not related episodes, so you can just watch them and hopefully um, we will be able to sort of, yeah. next week when we chat again, we'll be able to sort of indulge a little bit. So the first episode is called The Eleventh really? Hour, which is, I think you might have already seen, it was Matt Smith's very first episode um, when David Tennant left the show and right. Matt Smith took over. So you might have already seen that yeah. one. The second one is an episode called Father's Day, 
which stars Christopher Eccleston and is from the very first series since the show came back. And then the third one is, it's, it's I would say it's probably, if I had to use Star Wars terms, I would probably say it's the, the Rise of Skywalker version of Doctor Who, which is either some people really like right. it and some people just think it's a really silly sort of self-indulgent thing. And it's called Love and Monsters. And I'd be quite interested to hear what you think of those. I would also advise to watch them in that order as well, because I feel like they're, they're kind of good um, leaps into it as well. Okay, cool. Do any of those names yeah, ring a and, bell? Uh, Doctor <laughs> Who is on Netflix, isn't it? I think, it, I, I'm not sure if it still is, but it definitely is on BBC iPlayer. Ace. Ace. Yes, so <laughs> otherwise Sounds, it yeah. would be a very short podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I... I I actually tell I tell a lie. I've seen another episode. Oh, go I've on. seen one with Tennant, Matt Smith, and the uh, the War Doctor, John Hurt. Yes, yes. You you seem what to have seen that? like the big, I, I, you, you've seen like the big episodes. So you've seen uh, Matt Smith's final episode where he regenerated into Peter right. Capaldi, and the one you're talking about is the 50th anniversary episode, which was. 2013 i want to say so coming up to 10 years ago but we're, we're, we're yeah. catching up <laughs> yeah. oh man yeah so Crazy. but for the listeners what 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 we plan on doing now is you won't notice a single thing changed but in a week's time we're going to get back together and we're going to rediscuss these episodes that if you've got time hopefully in the week you've um managed to watch the three of them so um I'll probably play some jingles now and then everybody will be able to come back and listen to us talk about Doctor a little bit more. Humans are better in one respect. You are better at subscribing. Seek, locate, subscribe. It's a week later and uh, we're back. No time has passed for you listeners. Um, Henry's back. You've watched all three episodes, I hope. I. All three, yes. All three, awesome. Um, let's go run through them in the order I sent them to you. So let's start with the 11th hour, which is Matt Smith's first Doctor Who episode. Before you said he was one of the Doctors you were most familiar with, you'd seen some of his episodes. Yes. So what did you think yeah. of the 11th hour? Um, it, it was the first one that I watched, like you say. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, I, I, I kind of knew what Matt Smith was about anyway because I had seen a few of his uh, episodes. Um, but Matt Smith's Doctor is weird. Like that first episode, <laughs> he's like uh, one strange guy. And I mean, I it was fine. I, I lent into it towards the end, but at first I was a bit like, I, I can't dig this. And oh, really? <laughs> this is a bit, it's a bit too much for me. Okay. Um, it, 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 it's witty charm I got, but yeah, at some points I was like, it's just it's a bit daft. Like <laughs> I'm not laughing. My um, friend Harry, who I co-host the main podcast with, one of his biggest pet peeves about the show is that a, a Doctor's first episode, when they've come out of a regeneration, they tend to be very sort of daft and stupid. So it's quite interesting that you've picked up on on those as some parts of the character as well that you didn't particularly like because. <laughs> Hopefully, and after this, if you go on and watch more episodes, you'll notice that those kind of elements disappear from that incarnation of Doctor, especially. Um, yeah. So, so is that quite hard to get into then? Because I sort of sent you this episode because I've always been told that this is a really good episode for people who have never seen the show before. This is like a, a great mm. jumping in point. How did you find that then? Yeah. Was that quite? Do you not think it was um, the best episode? I think it was a gr- I, as a, as a jumping in point. I think it it does work really well because yeah. Um, and I I really like a um, Amy Amy Pond. Amy Pond. There we go. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm right. I'm right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, and you're introduced to her, and and she's a great character. I, I really like Karen Gillan. Um, it, it it from the few episodes that I have watched. Yeah. It seems to. In capture the the fun side of Doctor Who quite well, yeah. Um, and uh, as, as a starting point, I think it worked really well in that regard. Oh, that's um, good. Yeah, all the side characters are great. I yeah. I wasn't 
what I struggle with with time travel shows as well is that I'm often sat there just trying to wrap my head around the time travel. But in this, I was, I didn't really mind. It's just, yeah. it's there. Don't think about it. Just have a laugh. And I like that. I did That's like good. That. I'm guessing, therefore, you you must be familiar with Karen Gillan from things like Avengers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and, how and is Jumanji it? For you? And, yeah. And, See, I sort of because I knew yeah. it from Doctor Who to then go on and do like these massive blockbuster films. So how is it for you yeah. to sort of know her from these big movies to then see her doing like a little British TV show? Yeah, it's um, I don't know. It's kind of weird. It's um, <laughs> I, I knew she started there. Yeah. Did she start with Matt Smith or did, was she also? Yeah, tenants, she started so? with Matt. Yeah. No, oh, she started with Matt. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. She she doesn't age. I don't I don't know how long ago <laughs> that that episode was, but she she looks the same. She still looks ace. I um, want to say that that episode must be about twelve years old now. I think, um, if I had to guess. Just, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it that... was cool. It was cool to see where she started. Yeah. So out of ten, like we'll do all, we'll do ten for all of these episodes. Out of ten, it's just a general fun thing to watch. If someone was to, if you okay, let's say you were going over to somebody's house and they said, oh, "I'm just going to put an episode of Doctor Who on." This was the episode that came on. Out of ten, how excited or how thrilled would you be that this is the one that they picked? I'd say a seven. Okay, I'd that's like, not too bad. You know, this is good. Yeah, yeah. This is this is good episode. Have some fun. Great. Cool. Um, yeah, seven. I'm excited to see, therefore, what your response are to the next two episodes, especially the final episode. Uh, but before we get to that, let's yeah. go with um, Father's Day, written by Paul Cornell, um, who, a bit of backstory, is considered to be one of the best writers of Doctor Who. He doesn't do a lot. He hasn't done much in, like, I want to say 10 years. So, um, but right. these episodes he's done are like really sort of fan favourites. You text me during the week to say you really enjoyed this episode. So uh, go for it. Yeah. Tell me, tell me what you liked about this one. <laughs> I, I I could tell while I was watching it that this <laughs> would be a, a fan favourite. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. I was I was I was quite shocked at how um, like much of an emotional episode it was. It, yeah. it really doesn't waste any time. Um, getting started, um, introducing you to, oh, the remind me of the companion's name. Um, like Rose, Tyler. Rose Tyler. Rose yeah. Tyler, that's it. Yeah, it doesn't waste any time. Just like, it, you're there and you're just invested because she's, you know, she wants to save a dad, obviously. Yeah. And that's compelling enough anyway. Yeah. Um, and I, I like Christopher Eccleston. I wasn't expecting that. Okay, um, he was, yeah, he, he was, he was, he was a lot different to Matt Smith. He seemed to have his head screwed on a bit more and almost a bit more sarcastic. I, yeah, I, and maybe, yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's I, interesting. I, I, you should mention that because this episode, in each series, there, there tends to be an episode which is known as a Doctor Light episode, which means the Doctor doesn't feature in it as much as he does in other episodes, usually because of scheduling conflicts and stuff like that. So it's interesting right. that despite him not having a massive role as, as he does in other episodes, that you really enjoyed him. But that said, considering what you said about Matt Smith with his sort of dorkiness and silliness, that sort of clown-esque about him, the fact that this guy was just like a tough northern guy in a leather jacket, I kind of get why you like him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 was, he was a cool doctor. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Um yeah, I, I love the emotional beats, and I, I really liked uh, Rose's mum yeah. as well. And also, what I didn't really see a lot of in the Matt Smith episode was the effects of you know massive alien spacecrafts. Uh, yeah, uh, what that effects having on the civilians. Yeah. Whereas in this, you actually see the civilians care that their dad's just been killed, and they're, yeah. they are scared for their life, and they're asking the doctor to save them. And yeah, I don't know. It seems a bit more. Hu- it's a very human episode. Definitely, um, definitely agree. And I, 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 I like that. As, as yeah. that, although it's a time traveling adventure, <laughs> it felt grounded. <laughs> yeah, there's and a there's a, sequ- there's a sequence in it that I really like, and I think it's just like, I don't. I think it might be the father of the groom gets attacked by one of the, uh, one of the monsters outside the church, 
And then it sort of revealed that because yeah. he had this old phone, it sort of works. And it's like, I really like how the groom character is sort of like grieving for his father almost. But then at the same time, he's like, I've got to put that behind me. I've got to carry on with this because everybody else needs saving. Yeah. So it's, I think it's a really well, it's, like you said, the human characters in it are, are really well fleshed out, which I, I do sort of agree sort of lost in current episodes of the show, especially with the mm. Matt Smith era. Yeah, because I, 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 I was struggling to to get behind the, um, uh, I don't I don't know how you'd word it the the effects that these aliens are having on the world. Yeah, yeah. In, in the Matt Smith one, I was almost assuming that this has happened so many times that <laughs> the people are just used to this. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is just a daily occurrence at yeah. this stage. Um, whereas end of the world time keeping demon monster things yeah you know people are scared to death they are yeah. dying it's uh, I, I really appreciate it and yeah. the whole um creating paradoxes with interacting with your older selves and all that kind of thing um, yeah it was fleshing out the time travel aspects yeah and i appreciate that it was dealing with little bits of it at a time like digestible yeah. segments yeah, yeah. How did you then find that, like, because one thing I was slightly worried about sending this one across is that you don't really have the build up of the character of Rose through the previous episodes. And then this one is quite a central episode around her, especially with her emotions and her backstory. Mm. How was that for you? Do you feel like you got as much of that, like, uh, emotion out of it as you could? Or do you feel like if you were to watch more of them, you therefore would maybe feel a bit more close to that character? Yeah, I th- I think it, it it would improve by a couple of points if, if yeah. I'd seen the previous however many episodes. But it's it's not a late episode in the season. I noticed it's like I think it's about a mid. Or something yeah, it's about like. midway. Yeah, it's not too far in. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, if I was to watch the first half of the season, I think it would have had a bit bigger impact. But that being said, I still really cared for Rose and and yeah. her, the journey with her father and and. I, I I really did grow to like her by the end of it. Awesome! I'm glad you enjoyed that one. What did you think to the like the production difference in the two ep- those two episodes then? Because the eleventh hour is quite high techy. There's some the CGI, let's put it that way, is massively enhanced in those Matt Smith episodes. But I, yeah. I, my personal opinion has always been that doesn't really matter as long as the story's good. Yeah, I I I, I agree. I mean the CGI on the monster. Things. I don't know if they had a name. Um, I, 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 Rec- I got to that point a few seconds ago and I suddenly realised I didn't know the name either, so <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they they worked as big flying black monsters. Yeah. It was fun. I wasn't looking at them thinking they look stupid. Yeah. Um, I mean, the CGI in the Matt Smith episodes um I was a bit like, oh, okay, this is definitely a TV level mm. CGI thing. Yeah. Um, like the the eel thing. I think the first shot of it, oh, I was yeah. like, oh dear, that doesn't look great. <laughs> it, it got it got a bit better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the designs are really wacky. Like <laughs> the, in the Matt Smith episode, the flying like eyeball spaceship yeah. thing. Uh, I mean, I, I knew Doctor Who was a bit wacky and and silly, but it's just like a massive flying eyeball. I was like, oh, right, okay. Um, is that quite okay. easy then to, yeah. to to find accessible then something like that? Something that is quite strange. Yeah, I think so. I think if because you're watching Doctor Who, it's that unique British time traveling thing. Yeah. You know, he, he flies around in a police box and <laughs> you've kind of got to embrace it. Exactly. Um, and I, I, I liked it. I thought awesome. I liked it, yeah. Okay, well, let's move on with Embracing the Strange into um, one of... I, I, I will tell you straight off, this is one of my favourite episodes of the show, but mainly because of the reasons that people seem to dislike it, which is Love and Monsters... Um, series two written by um, Russell T Davies um, starring Peter Kay um, this is another Doctor Light episode ironically um, not intentionally sent yeah. across but you tell me what you thought of this episode I really liked it awesome I, I, it, it, 
yeah, no, I, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I, I enjoyed it consistently for the first three quarters. I yeah. was having a great time for the first three quarters, and and then I was having a good time for the last quarter. Okay. Um, <laughs> I really, really liked. Uh, I don't know the character's name. Okay. The main bloke um, yeah. in this episode. I was invested in. I really <laughs> like this fellow. Um, yeah. His interactions with Rose's mum, the fact that he was like, I'm just going to be a friend by the end of yeah. it. I was like, you're just a nice guy. Um, and I really like the idea of Linda, the, um, the, like the Doctor Who investigation group. Yeah. Uh, and I thought that was so cute. And I was getting so wound up that they kept getting absorbed by the <laughs> PK. Um, I just wanted to see them like, do their thing. Yeah. It was lovely. It was so nice. <laughs> it is um, a fun episode, isn't it? Really it's, yeah. It, it, yeah. It gets a lot of stick because I think people think the doctor's not in it much and it's it's a filler episode almost. But I think it does really well uh sort of telling the the, the human story, something that we've spoken about a little bit so far. You know, like how people within this world actually live and the strange things that go on and the fact that if this was real, there would be little subgroups of investigators and yeah. what would now be like internet journalists and fan theories and, you know, Illuminati stuff and all, yeah. all weird stuff like that on the internet. And I think it's great. Yeah, I, I, I think people would probably get the idea that I'm into grounded kind yeah. of the, the, the human elements of it because it is a big sci-fi and it's great to take a look at the little guy yeah. um, and you really get a in-depth character study of the little guy and I, I, I was so there for the journey yeah um and, and the structure of it was weird and it took me a while to get my head around the because the, they lay the episode out quite strangely yeah, um, yeah with like a flashback at the start and then a narrative voiceover thing I don't know yeah but and when I got behind that, I was, I thought it was ace. It was, um, <laughs> it lent into the weirdness. Um, yeah, yeah, just had a real good time. Awesome. Also, Moaning Myrtle from Harry Potter played the girlfriend, <laughs> I swear. Yes. Yeah, I think, I yeah. think you're right there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let the, me double check. I and, will, I will and check. Olivia Colm. Yeah, and yes. I'm pretty certain, that, well, no, it was. It was Olivia <laughs> Coleman was in Matt Smith's first episode yeah like, she was yeah, I think some... <laughs> it's strange yeah, seeing so these many stars British actors before, in this show. before they become such big names suddenly like having these little um one-off roles in like a one episode like halfway through a series episode of Doctor Who it's great yeah it, it really is I mean Olivia Coleman's won an Oscar and she only <laughs> had like three lines in in that episode I was astounded <laughs> <laughs> it, okay, so we, I forgot to do it for Father's Day, but out of ten, how, what's your rating of this one? Um, Father's Day, I'd go with uh, either an eight or a mm, let's go nine. Okay, I, I struggle to fault that episode. Honestly, I can't think of anything I'd do differently. Okay, uh, and Love and Monsters, I'd give a nine but for different reasons okay i would i had a, a, a lot more of a fun time with yeah. love and monsters i'd rather watch that again than i would father's yeah. day but father's day is a, a better episode probably yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but i really enjoyed both of them awesome i'm glad i'm glad you enjoyed them so okay so you've watched these three episodes have you all been swayed or tempted to possibly go and dive in and watch a few more random episodes? I have. Hey. I, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, That's I, good. I definitely want to check out. Yeah, I definitely want to check out um, David, uh, like a David Tennant Doctor episode. Yeah. Because I didn't. I think he only has like three lines again. So <laughs> I'd love to see him do his thing, considering yeah. he is probably the fan favorite or, or yeah. from what i hear anyway yeah that's cool yeah. well hopefully if you're up for it then we, maybe in a couple of months time we'll do another one of these and every now and again we can set across definitely. a few episodes definitely that sounds good fun so there you have it there was my really fun chat with henry 
big thanks to Henry for coming on the show. Um, definitely want to do something like this again with Henry in the future. Um, so if you want that and you can think of any episode suggestions that you think Henry would like, leave them in the comments below. We'll probably do another three, maybe some classic Doctor Who, um, preferably New Who because it's a bit easier to access. But yeah, let us know and um, we'll see what we can do. Also, like, comment, subscribe, do all that. You guys are awesome. Thanks very much for listening for the last year and a bit. Um, and we'll see you again soon. Ta-ra.